Hello everyone and welcome to Catching Up with the Clemenses, brought to you by the Mark Twain House and Museum in Hartford, Connecticut. My name is Jody, and I care for the museum collections. And I'm Erin. I coordinate school programs here at the house. On today's chapter of Catching Up with the Clemenses, we'll answer the question, what's behind this screen in the dining room? The screen acts as a divider between the dining room and the butler's pantry. You may have a dining room in your own home, but not many of us have a butler's pantry because not many of us have butlers these days. But not many people had butlers in the Clemenses' time period either. The butler was the highest ranking and most trusted servant in a wealthy home. They were in charge of making sure the household operated smoothly for the people who lived there and for all the people who came to visit. Can you think of any butlers you know from movies or TV? What about Batman's butler, Alfred? or Jeffrey from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? And who could forget Mr. Carson from Downton Abbey? George Griffin was the butler in the Clemens' Hartford house. We introduced you to him in our last episode and we'll tell you more about him today. For all we know about George's work as the butler, there's a lot we don't know about him, especially about his personal life outside the Clemens' home. One of the best ways we can learn about people in the past is to read the things they wrote, like in letters and diaries. But to do that, people need to save those items and keep them for years. Then those items would need to end up somewhere, like here in the collection of books and papers I take care of at the museum, where they can be cared for long term and made available to the public, to researchers, and to students like you. The problem we face is that often only letters, photographs, and belongings of famous people, like Sam Clemens, are saved. And not saved are the items related to regular people around them, like George and the other people who worked here. While we can learn a lot about George from the letters written by Sam and Livy, we have to remember we're only getting the Clemens' perspective on George as someone who worked for them. We don't have records or letters for many of the staff members who worked in the Clemens household. But there's another reason we can't tell you that much about George's early life. George was a black man who'd been enslaved by a white family when he was younger. White slave owners did not record an enslaved person's birth and family relationships the way a free person's might have been recorded at the time. This means even George may not have known where or when he was born. What we do know is that George freed himself from enslavement and worked for a Union general during the Civil War. Sam Clemens describes George Griffin in his story, A Family Sketch. It's about all the people who lived and worked in his homes. Sam didn't publish it when he was alive, but many years later in 2014, it was published in this book, along with other things written by the family about the family. Now let's hear what Sam had to say about George. George was an accident. He came to wash some windows and remained half a generation. He was a Maryland slave by birth. The proclamation set him free. And as a young fella, he saw his fair share of the Civil War as a body servant to General Devens. He was handsome, well-built, shrewd, wise, polite, always good-natured, cheerful to gaiety, honest, religious, a cautious truth speaker, devoted friend to the family, champion of its interests, a sort of idol to the children. He was invaluable, for his large wisdoms and his good nature made up for his defects. There was nothing commonplace about George. He had a remarkably good head. His promise was good, his note was good. He could be trusted to any extent with money or other valuables. And he had the respect, and I may say, the warm, friendly regard of every visiting intimate of our house. We can learn about George's personal life from things the Clemens family wrote, like the passage you just heard, and from a few letters George wrote to the Clemens daughters when they were traveling. We know that he was married and had children, though we don't have any photographs of him or his family. We also know that he lived in an apartment in Hartford, though we had a room here in the house. He was an important member of the city's African-American community and active in his church and in politics. And after the Clemens family left Hartford, George lived and worked in New York City. So you may be wondering, what exactly did George do here as the butler in the Clemens house? George did a lot of things. He answered the door to welcome visitors and helped them avoid people they didn't want to talk to. 
He also delivered the mail and the newspapers and answered the telephone. He was really Sam Clemens' personal assistant, making sure his shoes were clean and polished and that his clothes were well cared for. He oversaw all the rest of the staff working here at the home and kept careful records of how much money the household was spending. After the Civil War, but before George came to work here at the house, he was a waiter at Allen House, a restaurant in Hartford. This meant that when he started here, he was already very good at a really important part of his job, coordinating and serving all the meals served in the dining room. The dining room was a place where the Clemenses could eat together as a family. Sam and Livy also were well known for their small yet formal dinner parties, which took place four to five times a week. According to their historical receipts, the family would spend as much as $100 a week for food. This was a lot of money back then, especially when you consider George's salary for the entire year was $360. The screen hid all the noise and activity happening in the butler's pantry from anyone out here in the dining room. When the plates were ready, George could walk directly from the butler's pantry around the screen and serve the Clemenses and their guests. Who cooks and serves family meals at your home? As the butler, George was the link between the people working in the kitchen to prepare the meal and the people waiting in the dining room to eat the meal. The butler's pantry, where I'm standing now, was the physical link between the kitchen over here and the dining room over there. At mealtime, the butler's pantry was one of the busiest rooms in the house. From this pantry, George supervised all the meals set the table, beautifully plated all the dishes, communicated with the cook about the timing of the courses, and supervised all the other staff. He was also in charge of caring for and protecting the family's fine china and glassware. He also scoured and cleaned the family's silver knives, forks, and plates. Who does the dishes in your family? Next time on Catching Up with the Clemenses, we'll answer the question, how did the Clemens family celebrate birthdays? Between now and then, we challenge you to identify these objects found in the kitchen that were important for preparing a birthday treat. What do you think they are? Do you have a question for us? You can send us an email at catchingup at marktwainhouse.org or send us a letter at the Mark Twain House and Museum, 351 Farmington Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut, 06105. Along with your question, tell us your first name, your age, and what city or town you live in. If we feature your question in a future video, we'll be sure to give you a shout out. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. We wanna keep our educational materials accessible to all. But while these videos are free for you, they're not free for us. If you want to support the creation of Catching Up with the Clemens' videos and other educational programming here at the Mark Twain House Museum, Please follow the link in the description below to donate now.